All right, welcome to Parsave Productions Waco Annual Charity Open. This is the 2020 version, the second Disc Golf Pro Tour of the year, presented by Prodigy Discs and Gotta Go, Gotta Throw. This is Paige Pierce, and, and um, I'm joined with Nate Perkins. What is up, everybody? We've got Emerson Keith from Dallas, Texas, Vino Michaela, all the way from Finland. Addison's a local, and I'm also from right up the street. Hole one, it's a par three, 291 feet. It was pretty windy yesterday. This hole, it's got a, looking at a headwind left to right. It gets pretty difficult with the OB right there on the right next to the bucket. These trees, if you hit any of these trees, you're pretty much dropping right down into out of bounds and almost re territory. Yeah, a lot of people go up and over just to avoid that initial gap. But with this wind, it's really making them hyzer out. And you see Emerson finding out of bounds on the left side, close to pin high. I believe that was an explorer he went with on the first tee. Addison, he's got a pretty big lefty arm. He's hanging this one out wide, and it just Great makes job. it back in bounds. And Vino is also opting to go with the high hyzer. Let's see how the wind affects this one. Wow, very high through the power lines even. Yeah, and you can see it. Oh, oh wow. That is how that happened. Okay, so he actually it got a wind gust and pushed it from right to left, and he kicked back in yeah. bounds right there. So I kind of see Vino and Emerson shots and it kind of scares me a little bit. And I just decided to take a lot off and just kind of lay that one up. You still have a safe bid, but it is a long one. You're looking at about a 60 footer. Decide to lay that one up. No, no reason to run it. I know from about 45. Ooh, really He's good looking such putt, a honestly. Good spin putt. He's got a unique setup for that spin putt. And Addison, from that angle, it's pretty hard to commit to the chains if you're, you know, looking at that OB behind it. So doesn't get it quite high enough. Same thing with Emerson. Emerson was kind of putting straight toward that out of bounds. I wonder if that had a factor yeah. in him hitting low cage right there. Yeah, probably doesn't want to start the round off with two OB strokes. He was probably had it in his mind a little bit. PA3? Hey Chris, can I get a PA3? two it's a par four 631 feet that sidewalk to the right is out of bounds this tree right here marks where these drives really need to get to to be able to attack this one into again we've kind of got a a pretty strong headwind here that's probably the only factor making this one difficult Addison goes, surprising or at least from the lefty there, in my opinion, he went up the right side on a severe hyzer flip. 
found He's a in tree. decent position. Yeah, in, yeah this yeah. this holds really, I think, about the second shot. Your yeah. drive doesn't necessarily matter where you land, but you need to be able to get up and down from where you do. And Vino going hyzer flip, and it misses the tree it needs to. And that's going to be in pretty good position over there on the left side. Shout out to OTB, only the best discs. Getting repped hard right here. <laughs> that's a cloud breaker, right? Yeah. Nice hyzer flip to flat. And it rides forward. You're going to be right there near Vino. Yeah. And the only thing you guys are going to have to worry about even slightly is maybe some footing that's not level. Yeah, if you're over there on the on the slope. But you can throw standstill from where you guys landed. And that was actually oh. really early out of Emerson's hand. He is still in a position to get up and down, but he's going to have to throw a little bit faster than he would normally. And he played that one well. It looked like the wind was going to pick it up and kind of straighten it out, and it just never really did. So this is Addison throwing a compass right here. And that, that is a beautiful. beautiful shot. Nice and straight flight. Well inside circle one. Oh no, that was such a beautiful shot. That deserved a little skip. It still had quite a bit of speed on it too. Yeah, that grass was pretty thick yeah, over there. Yeah, just grabbed it. <laughs> and Vino just has that unique oh. setup and it does it squares that tree out the way that vino kind of curls that wrist late almost like a almost like seppo yeah he's got a disc change here it looks like he's thinking about the wind going with something a little more stable yeah that was definitely a stable disc he put his putting putters down and grabbed that i wonder what that disc was it's interesting to see when players choose to putt with something else because of the wind. Yeah. And I'm almost considering that option right here. This is a ripping headwind right to left. A very difficult putt. Great bid. I mean. Yeah, if you get that lift, you know, it's hard to play that lift. Wow. And you see how the wind just makes Emerson's disc just stall on that slow hyzer. I mean, even this, this is like 20 feet and it's. A difficult putt yeah enough to make you think about it and sometimes that's all that you need to to yeah to put a this. block in the way yeah mm -hmm. a little left side but a good catch yeah, that's what that's what makes this course pretty special is you can be out here playing in the wind the hole well, we is know that we're going to go into uh, into the woods yeah. and get protected, and the, the game kind of changes a little bit. It's and then the, you these... forget about it in the mm -hmm. woods, and you pop back out to the wind on, like, hole 13, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Forgot about how windy it was today. Yeah. All right, so all pars on that one. Emerson is still the only one over par. He's going to be looking to grab a birdie soon and jump back the right direction. Hole three, they moved this one back about 25 feet this year. It's at 320 feet. There's a bunch of different options on this hole. Right-hand, backhand players are coming right down this alleyway right here, either left or right of that tree. These trees right here are kind of the guardian for the circle's edge shots. There is an alley on that left side. As you can see, Addison taking it with the hyzer. Just Great a shot. little short. He might be circle's edge. Yeah, he, I think he's just inside the circle. 
great drive, but he wanted that one to be a tiny bit flatter, I'm guessing, but a putt's a putt. Ooh. And it did look like he ticked that tree just enough to scoot him around it. And Vino's going to find also inside the circle, but he will be on the backside deep. Great rip from Vino. And you're going that same line as Addison, but with a sidearm. I've seen you throw this shot so many times over the years. I really love this line. Little bit of turn. Nice skip. Make it look easy. <laughs> Here, James Conrad cheering me on in the background. <laughs> Emerson with a nice wide hyzer with his explorer. Great shot. Great looking shot. Headwind left to right for Addison. Oh, good stick from Circle's Edge. And that's a great putt. You know, he missed the 20-footer on the last hole, and then he's faced with a 30-footer into a stronger win on an elevated basket and just bangs it in there that. for the birdie. Sponsored by Legit. They are the people, Ryan Draper, he actually runs the tournament, so it's cool to see Addison out here representing... It's a pretty strong tailwind for Vino. Oh, and a rising putt left side, and it sticks it. That's a great two from Vino. Yes, it is. This elevated pin definitely makes things tricky with how windy mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, and the putting in the wind is definitely tricky because you have to put a little nose up, and if you put too much angle in that wind. And that was a little left as well, but Emerson's going to card the birdie, and that's definitely a good catch there by that basket. This is a pretty stout headwind, but it's close enough. I'm not too worried about it. Oh my goodness. It just it just didn't like that one. No, it did not. Appreciate the replay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's one of those ones that definitely should have stuck, but got to try to wipe that out of your brain moving into the beast, the back nine. Well, old back old nine. Old school back nine, yeah. All right, we got a moving leaderboard. Great job, Parse Productions, on this. It's good to have him back. Yeah, it is. Hole four. One of the shorter par fours you're ever going to play. 441 feet, snaking through these tight woods right here. Anything that is off the fairway, it's often a, just a pitch out. If you get off this fairway right here, there's so many different ways to play this one. This fairway moves gentle from right to left. Addison going with the flexing sidearm, but he puts a little bit too much turn on it. He was wanting that to hyzer her back around the corner. And Vino is going standstill with something stable and slow right there. Oh, good oh, little kick that's over. A good little kick off that tree. He's going to be in prime position right there. Yeah, I saw your, I watched your card play this round and he looked upset about that release and I was wondering why and maybe that was because yeah, he, he knew, knew it was a little, was a little right, but good kick there. Now oh, Emerson. look at that. Oh, lots of action wow. up yeah. on this fairway. A ton of action right there. So Emerson actually went a little bit faster and I'm going faster here as well. I'm throwing a, an FD from Discmania. Ooh. And I'm loving the way that one's flying. That was beautiful, Heather okay. Flip. Okay, and that's how it got there. Just a little little inside, it catches that hillside and kind of stops it from scooting up. Addison going with the sidearm roller here. As you can see, like Nate said, he's off the fairway and it's more or less a pitch out. Um, and that one looked to be pretty good, but he found himself back in the woods, so he's going to have a... Another scramble shot from there. And these are the small. Ooh. 
and that, that was a little hot, got a pretty fast skip, could have been headed toward the water and gets a, gets a good break right there. It was such a smooth shot. Yeah, it's but a pretty yeah, it just tight hit, line right it there. It just hit that perfect part of dirt where it skips strongly. Mm -hmm. Vino with a nice backhand and hyzer. He hits that last minute guardian tree though, and he'll be a little outside circle one. This is such a wide stance. Yeah, he's got those hips really open. This can be pretty difficult to hit your line when you're set up like that. He does actually pushes it a little long and he's gonna have a look for his three. Emerson staring straight at the water here. Tiny bit higher. It, it was good positioning. It was right on the pole, but just being a little bit low, it hit that front cage and kind of made it jump to the left. Vino from just outside Circle's Edge. Look at that deadly setup. Oh, oh same gosh. thing there. Just a tiny bit low. Love that point and shoot putting style from Vino, though. All right, and that's a great birdie to pick up. Lone birdie on the card. Yeah, three on this hole is, it always feels good. That one of the tightest fairways out here at the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going to jump back ahead of Addison, joining Vino at one under. I just want to wake up and feel happy and go out to the disc golf course and have fun. For me, I'm trying to find a, a sustainable way of feeling confident, good about myself. Your mental game kind of represents what you're going through in your everyday life. When I've been uh, relaxed and calm off the disc golf course, that's it's translated greatly. Making sure that uh, you have all your ducks in a row uh, before coming in is uh, really helpful, just so when you're on the course, you can focus on the disc golf and that's it. I'm always looking to improve kind of my uh, my short range accuracy, uh, both forehand and backhand. If I'm off throwing at low power, some things just don't quite sync up correctly. But when I throw with a little bit more energy, things fall in place a little bit more, making me a little bit more accurate. I love going to play shorter courses to practice my, uh, my control putter shots, my control um, forehand shots, anything in, the, in the, the smaller realm. My name is Eagle McMahon and I throw for Discmania. All right, moving into hole five. It's a par three, 264 feet, pretty much dead straight. It's a pretty tight fairway here, maybe 25 feet across from left to right. We're going up this hill right here. Really the place to kind of hit into that hill and kind of skip forward. Yeah, if you're throwing a little bit faster of a disc, you want to definitely skip off that dirt patch and it, it happens very often yeah. actually. Um, but I also see a lot of players go with a slower speed and just try to get a full air shot. But this hole looks so cool with the three different levels of terrain. Yeah. And the basket, that tree that looks like a Y up there, it's really only about 10 feet from it. So even if you're short of this basket, you do have a putt. You're not short though. No, <laughs> you that, parked it. That's about as close as I it. can get with the forehand. That was that's such a color a glow shot. FD3. And that is just wow. a beautiful line from Vino. Great flip up to flat and just rode forward. Emerson lining up a backhand mid range. Ah, 
Oh, and just lets it go a tiny bit early. He's going to find that tree on the left side and kick him down outside of circle two even. Addison was trying to flip that one up. I don't think he got enough power on it to make sure it rode f forward. Um, so just a little bit tentative on the release there, and he's going to find the right side of the fairway. Addison does have a look right here. 45 feet, maybe. Oh, gives it a solid bid. And it's cool to see him playing in front of his whole family. It seemed like all of his family was out there today watching him. And look at this point and shoot right here. He extends toward the center. There it is. That late kind of extension mm -hmm. and then curls it back to his right hip. Great birdie there. He puts it fast too. He yeah, really, he does. He puts it with it's a lot of confidence. Fast. Emerson, you can see the disappointment in his face. He did not want to par here. And he's kind of ready to get on track, start carting some birdies. No doubt about it. Definitely all came into this event with high expectations. And you need to score to keep up with the field these days. Mm -hmm. You and Vino are both moving up to two under par. We're moving into hole six. Yeah, we're getting even tighter here now. This one's a par three, only 267 feet, but the main gap is only like 12 or 15 feet across. Forehand is a common play. The backhand turnover also works. You also need speed control on this one. You can't just blast it down there because the green is pretty protected long. And that is, that's a good line right there, but just a foot or so to the left and it catches one of those guardian trees. I know going with the backhand play, this one takes so much touch and just trust in your disc and your angle control, really. That is money. Beautiful shot. Emerson opting for the sidearm here. This is a, this is the, I would say like typical hole where somebody would ask, is it better for sidearm or better for backhand? Yeah, no doubt. And that was just Perfect. That was so much touch right there from Emerson. Perfect. I mean, he went down the center of the gap and yeah. was in no danger of skipping along. A beautiful drive. And he even put a little bit of turn on it, mm -hmm. like perfectly flexed right mm -hmm. down the center. Addison doesn't quite get through the gap. He hits a late tree in that gap and is going to find himself on the downslope, but still a bit short of putting range. So this is actually a, a somewhat tricky up and down right here. I kind of hang Ooh. it wide and get a pretty fortunate skip off that tree. Addison grabbing a putter here. It looks like he's going into a putting stance. Just trying to step putt that one down the hill and settle for his par. I know where are the circle yep okay so he's just inside the circle on the back side I love this view he has to go to a straddle here I don't believe he's going to be changing too much with his routine going to this straddle 
Let's see if he. There it is. All right. Solid putt right in the center. His last two putts have looked really good. Those first couple, remember he hit a little left. It mm -hmm. was really good adjustment halfway through this round, almost halfway through this round. <laughs> I see you a little hesitant there. Definitely the, left side. You've already seen a couple that should have <laughs> stayed in. So, you, you know, these baskets really make you want to hit the basket perfect yes, they do they're they catch um but they do not like left and right yes compared to some of the other baskets that we play on oh sweet that shot smooth jack smooth forehand from emerson you see that back foot leave the ground just before that disc mm -hmm. comes through emerson carding his first birdie of the round he's moving up to one under par Sorry, second birdie of the round. All right, hole seven. Another short par four coming in at only 462 feet. We've got a mando tree early to our left and a somewhat tight gap to get out here into the open. Really, this one, again, is all about the drive. You get that drive out there, and it's it's a routine up and down. Mm-hmm. The one thing that can happen on a drive that prevents you from getting up and down is if you throw it too far left. If you throw it too far left, it makes that second shot quite a bit more difficult. But your first objective is getting out of this gap clean, and Vino does so beautifully right in the center of that open grass field. And he bit off a lot of the distance. His next shot is definitely going to be standstill territory. Emerson going Explorer. chameleon explorer and he immediately turns around said something fell on his head we got the replay are we about to see this oh <laughs> no way right before he threw oh it was right in the setup that is crazy <laughs> as soon as the disc leaves the frame he's already like what just yeah. happened i'm glad he executed that shot so well he's also in the grass field a little shorter than vino but he still is in birdie three range all right and you boys are actually making this shot look easy and i'm here to tell you that it is not as easy it's as a they're pretty tight it gap seem. it's a pretty tight gap for sure this hole is playing 0.4 strokes under par. A tiny bit low, but he gets it through, and that cut roll does not send him quite into the woods. A little bit late out of his hand. Well, more so a little bit turned over. He's going to find himself in that little ravine, mm -hmm. but there is still um, makeable putts from down there. Oh, neat. <sighs> I thought I did it, Paige. Wow. That was exciting. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> a close one. All right. Vino's looking like he has about 120 to go. And he jump puts it. Wow. A little short, he's going to be close to the circle's edge underneath the basket. And Emerson's pretty far left, and he's actually opting to go with a forehand Anheuser. He said he liked the way that it hits the hill. And I can see why. That's money right there. Is that a harp? Uh, I'm not sure what that was, to be honest. Yeah, I think that white one's a harp. really hot out here you're gonna see a lot of players bagging some sort of chalk bag whale sack that's yeah, probably the warmest round of the year that yeah i think it is absolutely 80 80 plus degrees middle of the day sun beaten down kind of just happy that we're playing right now Paige. me too me too it's 2020 there's a pandemic 
Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of crazy right now. A lot of things going I mean, on. We don't even know if we're gonna play today. Yep. Or tomorrow. Or anytime soon, really. Yeah, with you know, when big sports organizations start closing down and yeah. you know Broadway shows, Disneyland, you know, oh, really? you name it, everything's shutting down. We're we're just happy to be out here and playing one of the best courses in Texas. There's that. 120 foot jump putt attempt right there. You can see he's getting his whole body involved in that one. Network. That Sign got me, me excited for some live disc golf. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. All right, what up with hole eight, Paige? I love this one. It is so difficult. The most difficult 213 foot par three I've ever seen. With the super skinny trees and they're right off the tee, it makes you have to throw this shot very softly. And this is something that the best players in the world don't have to do very often, so it challenges a new part of their game. This is definitely a curveball. Yeah. It is a tight gap. And Vino just a little bit late on that release. He's going to find the trees and send him left into the woods. Emerson also going with the backhand here. Looks like a mid. A little bit faster of a choice than I thought he would go with. He finds, he kind of like early releases it. Just a little left, yeah. This is the play that I think the hole was designed for. Sidearm. Oh, man. It was close. Just a little left side, but there's no room for air with a gap this tight. Addison, Heiser flip, lefty with a putter. Perfectly thrown shot. But a little bit hot, and he's going to be out mm, close to circle's edge, deep. Yeah, at only 213 feet, you would expect this one to be playing more under the par than it is. It's only playing 0.17 of a stroke under par. And you can see this is Texas golf to a T. If you get off the fairway, you are in thorns, poison ivy. And this is a tournament I would suggest looking at all your favorite players' scramble rate on UDISC because yeah. if you're a good scrambler out here you're gonna be scoring well and we actually just got word that round three has been canceled round two will be the final round of the second pro tour of the season wow breaking news just now it's gonna add a little bit of extra excitement i would say to this round round two coming up but how are these players going to finish round one? Emerson throws a nice, soft approach there. He yeah, has a great out. was out of position, yeah. so he's just trying to get up and down. Addison, like we said, he's just inside the circle, but look at this putt he's got. Obstructed, super wide straddle, and pulls it just a tiny bit wide. You can see the disappointment. He wishes he had that one back. You don't get too many birdie looks out here on the beast, so the ones you do get, you got to make sure you get them in. So we'll pick up a few pars on this hole and move into probably... The hardest hole in the course? What do you think? Yeah, it's it's up there with the hardest hole in the course. What do you think the stats say? Where is it at? I would say since they moved it down to a par four this year that it's going to be under par. But it's going to be over par. Is it? You think it's going to be oh, under par? Oh, over par. Yes, I'm sorry. I misspoke. Yes. Yeah, it's a par four this year. It's always been a par five for the as long as I could remember. 
at 519 feet the the gap to get all the way down in this bowl is 15 feet on the right side and maybe eight feet on the left side most of these players are going to be choosing to attack here final going with the backhand the the thought is do you go towards that bowl down there or do you throw a slower speed disc and just place one on the fairway and that's a pretty big miss right there from Vino. That was left side, and it got redirected even further left. He's going to have almost nothing where he's at. Do you think any of the MPO players don't go for the bowl on this hole? Less and less every year choose to lay this one up. Yeah. For sure. Um, I don't think anyone on this card Ooh. is laying it up. You can see Emerson throwing that chameleon explorer right there. Good and speed almost, control, just a tiny bit left. Yeah, just a tiny bit left. He almost snuck down that left side. And you can see this one almost wants to sneak down that left oh. side and catches the tree. And Night strike. Yeah, that was the, the night strike. The night strike two, right? Yeah. And Addison going lefty forehand on that Trying right to flex side. Trying down? Yeah. yeah, something stable and... Almost, just a little too turned over right there. It looked like it might have got a little bit of rollout action. He might just be right on the edge, but like we were just talking about with the Texas golf, this is what yep. you're left with if you don't find the fairway. Let's give Vino a Whoa, warm what welcome with the... is that shot he's Texas lining up? Thorns. I. It was like... It's a tough, yeah. It's like a patent Whoa. pending, like over-the-top kind of shot. Backhand style but overhand super severe anheuser and there's that scramble that game we're nice talking about that was out. not a great position and i almost got it all the way down there into a bowl to to be able to get up and down and final again is in the woods has to go forehand cut roller and he's back and blocked on the other side i think this is the biggest difference in men and women's golf is that us, generally speaking, the women would have pitched out and reset themselves in the center of the fairway, but you guys have a lot more trick shots and, you yeah. know, cut rollers and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the error with that is you can find yourself right back into the woods and, and clearly does, it's and not a place you want to be. Look at where Emerson is. No. <laughs> and Emerson's going roller right here. It looked good. Oh, it got a little bit of a redirect when it hit the ground and it sent him back and on the right side of the rough. Like, what do you think the purpose of that was? That seems so unnecessary. Just pitch it out into the open and go for the easy up and down. Let them know, Paige. Emerson. Let them know. Come on, man. Get and, a better game plan going there. Let me know what you think about this right here. Vino is going huge oh. over the top. Wow. And it was working out. The wind just kind of like pushed it from left to right and he caught that late cottonwood that kind of blocks the green up there so he dropped down just not gonna have a putt oh just a tiny tiny bit too early and i have the tiniest window right here and i'm just trying to trying to go for it um Whoa. catch the tree and no harm done right there still gonna be taking a five and Emerson was in a tough spot right here. He took Whoa. all the time he could to line that one up. Gets it all the way through. It lands right past the bucket and then rolls to no man's land. Yeah, I 50 saw that. Long. I saw that cameraman pan forward. It looked like Emerson actually even fell over with how much exertion he put into that shot. He was in a mess of thorns and ivy. That's what I'm it, saying. It, I'm, the rough is that's what I'm thick. saying, Em. Get a little jump putt out of the woods. You're finding yourself right on the center of the fairway. That's my advice for you. <laughs> it's easier to Vino. say when you're not throwing the shot. <laughs> Closing that wound up. He's going to be taking a double bogey six. And Emerson actually had, he had nothing Whoa. back there. And that was master That's little how far it trick rolled. shot right there. That was beautiful. You could hardly even see him through all those branches. Yeah.
Emerson made a comment in y'all's round earlier in the in the round that he's played here so much that the beast owes him one. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to see yeah. essentially three locals playing on this track and you know, I mean, you you've probably played over a hundred rounds at this course, wouldn't yeah, you say? It's, it's probably close, yeah. So it's pretty cool to see that you know every time is a new time yeah you're never in the same place twice here and that is going to do it for the front nine shout out to par save productions for having us on shout out to millennium golf discs Take a look at the leaderboard hot scores through nine holes. Colton Montgomery, what a front nine. With the three to close it out last year, that would have been nine through nine, Colton. That is some good golf right there. A lot of blue on the scorecard. And we, that wasn't the best front nine. We're definitely looking to pick up the pace in the back. Look at that view of those limestone walls looking over the Brazos River. Join us on the back nine and watch us go back into the wind. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell for alerts. Thanks for watching.